everybody, it's Gordon. Welcome back to the shop. It is 2022, so we're just gonna get right to it. Uh, new setup, kind of new layout. I'm done screwing around with trying to figure out uh, optimal positions and lighting and all that good stuff. So let's just get the first one uh, under our belt and then we'll, we'll dial it in from there. So we're gonna start with a Stanley Rosewood, uh, Brazilian Rosewood tote, of course. It's missing a horn, classic. Uh, we've seen this a thousand times. This one has uh, still left the original bore in place, so positioning is gonna be super easy. We just need to clean this off. So you've seen me do this before, I'm gonna just follow all my normal steps, and that is I'm gonna glue it to a sled. I use hot melt glue. We're gonna get a nice flat, clean cut, expose the grain, open it up a little bit, get the dirt and debris or whatever else is in there, get that out of the way, and uh, glue a piece of Brazilian rosewood on. We'll try and match the grain. This one, you can't really see well. Um, it's got a pretty shape to it. Also has somebody's initials carved in the side and we'll decide what we're gonna do with that later. Um, oftentimes I like to leave them. So I think we just may very well do that, but that's another discussion. So let's get the horn fixed. Um, and then what is this for? This would be uh, for any number of different sizes. So I'm just going to do this. Let's grab for a reference. This is a four. It's aluminum. So it's an A4. And if you want to get an idea of what the horn's supposed to look like, it's always good to have a reference. And I will often do this with my own planes or some of the totes that I have in stock. And that is do a comparison just to get an idea what that looks like. So there's the shape that we're looking for, right? There's the original curve. I would assume this to be a fairly original tote. Um, a little bit different in size, a little bit different in height. So that's not uncommon to see this either. But if we adjust it, we can see straight up um, kind of what we're missing. All right, so just a little horn off the end, and this would be a fairly easy repair. I'm not gonna go ahead and bolt this on, but you can see how that fits. And this one would be also workable for my A4, although we gotta watch that horn. We're getting really close uh, in there. So let's get to it. So I just use a scrap piece of wood, I'll call it a sled, and then I position the tote. Uh, exactly where I want it and then uh, glue away. So I use hot melt. It's safe. It's temporary. Gets a good bite. Doesn't harm this guy at all. And of course it's, I haven't finished it yet, but we will clean this one up if we graft our new horn on. Let's just tack it in about six or eight places, whatever you're comfortable with here. Uh, I'm gonna take a really light cut, a light pass, a skim pass. So, uh, you know, we're not gonna screw this thing down or put extra calls or uh, pieces on the sides of it. That's pretty much it. Tech it in place allows me to keep my fingers out of the blade, uh, put the guards on, of course, so you're not gonna run your equipment without your uh, safety features and PPE, so. There we go, let it dry, make sure that that's good and secure and then we'll make a cut. Okay, so with the glue dry and uh, we make our pass, this is exactly what we're looking for and that is open pores. You can see that by cleaning this off and making a nice flat cut, this is gonna give me an excellent bonding surface and that's really what it's all about right there. I didn't cover the entire bore, that'll help us locate when we go to redrill and I also, so our glue up's done and uh, we've got a really good uh, bond here. We got a nice piece of rosewood. And to make this fit, what I'd like to do is, is have a small overlap, right? So that, um, you know, I want it to be proud. The new piece is gonna be blended in. We're gonna rasp this and cut it. But something that I do, uh, you know, because this is Brazilian rosewood and it's so valuable, I keep every, every little piece along the way. And so as long as we've got this attached right now, as you can see, I went ahead and dressed two sides of this to clean it up so I can see the grain 
and get a better idea of how the scrap can be used later. So I'm gonna throw it back in the box. But for now, what we need to do is take a tote that we know is got the same geometry and I'm gonna just trace it on there. And again, I know this is really important material and I don't wanna to be too stingy because if you try and get too close with your lines, or you try and be too conservative, you'll end up gluing a piece on here and you won't have enough material. You know, I've ended up with this kind of a scenario before where you know, I'm trying to, again, make something work. And so although it looks like I'm being a little bit generous in my rosewood, it's really about you know, making a product that's, that's gonna suit our needs. So there you have it. We're gonna trace the horn. There's my cutout. This piece will, once it's upside down, could serve as another repair. This piece certainly will also serve as another repair. And uh, I was gonna try and do something fun with you guys and, and try and tell you about this internal threaded hole that I found in the wood. But as you can see, this is two pieces of Brazilian rosewood book matched. So I ripped them, prepped them, put them back together. And it's just ironic that the hole ended up um, you know, matched up like that. So it's kind of funny, but pointless uh, in this video. So here we go. Let's cut this out, get to uh, shaping and try and bring this guy back to life. Once we get this shape cut, uh, it gives us our first look at what the grain's going to be like. And, you know, we did our best, let me turn it this way, to match the, the grain pattern, right? And this again is Brazilian rosewood on rosewood. But, um, Sometimes when you get to the internal uh, elements that are going on in there, you get a different color. If you don't like the coloration, we can always dye that. We can put a little bit of darker color on it and uh, make it less pronounced. Um, sometimes if it's a cool shape, I did a piece of babinga once and it had a wing shape to it and uh, it was just uh, beautiful. So we left it. But now we have this guy cut, we are ready to rasp uh, and shape that in. Also, with regards to the epoxy that's used here, this was a two-part epoxy that was tinted. I always keep a puddle, um, and this is what was used when we glued this thing together. So we know if we have our puddle, and this is super hard and super cure, that that's what's going on in, in the handle itself. So we're good to go. How did we cut this out? You've got options. You don't need a fancy bandsaw. You don't need the high-end equipment. Uh, something as simple as a jeweler saw, which would take you a long time. That's a really small tube. Uh, I like to use, you know, grandpa's uh, coping saw. So something that's got a little bit of vintage and some history to it. And if you're not in possession of something like this, of course, you can just go right up to Lowe's and get a, you know, $7 cobalt uh, saw and do the exact same thing. So lots of options. Don't let you know, big equipment and bandsaws uh, deter you from taking this on. Our next step is to shape this, and uh, and I do this by hand. So I'm gonna. So as we're filing along, I want to just stop and take a look at progress. All I did first was try and knock the edges off, and so we're starting to get a little bit of shape and not violate the original tote. Again, our piece that we glued on is a little bit proud, and that's done on purpose to give us the ability to blend that in. Okay, but we're starting to see some of the grain. And again, I'm not in a hurry. So, you know, there's there's belt sanders, power tools, power rasps, Fordham, whatever you wanna use, um, you know, have at it. But typically when you're that aggressive and you start going into something, um, you know, it's easy to overshoot. And I'm, I guess I'm just more of a patient person. I'm gonna take my time and, and just keep filing. So here's our progress at this point. It's coming along pretty nice. And then also I, I should mention the pieces that we cut off. That was my point in doing the preparation while it was a bigger piece, right? So now I have this perfectly smooth, you know, open grain flat surface ready for adhesion. I did dress one side there as well. This was the other piece that was left behind. Um, plenty of material to work with there. And again, that surface is flat. It's got a little bit of epoxy on it, but we can knock that off. So those are rosewood uh, components that go back in the in the storage bin. And you uh, have seen in previous videos too, I bought a bunch of knife handles um, on the Can I Have It website, auction website, and they're Brazilian rosewood. I use these um, you know, in my repairs, of course. And then in this case, this is a, a piece of a fence 
that was supplied with the broken tote uh, from Mr. Jenks. And so this is the subject of our repair today and that's where I'm using fence parts. So lots of resources out there and of course there's always broken, um, you know, rosewood salvage pieces that I have. Uh, again, I'm looking at grain and, and so forth to try and match those in. But this is where we are. Okay, so let's get up close and personal for a second. I wanna take a really uh, close look at where we are with shaping. And I wanna make a quick statement on why I use hard tools or files and rafts rather than trying to sand this with sandpaper or, or my fingers. So we, as you can see, we're coming into shape. Let me give you an idea where we are. How about if I back out here? So this is our, our progress. And on this side, uh, as you know, the, our new piece that we added on right here was left proud. And what I did just to make a point is I tried sanding that and that's just using sandpaper, right? We use like a 280, 320, whatever it is. And I put my finger on here and I sand. What's going on is my finger, because it's a soft backing, is gonna just skip over that joint and the sandpaper is gonna conform to the mismatched surfaces. So what I get is I'm sanding into the original rosewood as well as I'm sanding you know, the new rosewood patch and my joint is still there. You can still see the epoxy shining through, right? And so I use hard tools because as you see, there's our epoxy joint, there's our line coming around. As we get to this point, I can address the specific area where, this, where the match is and you can see it becomes more seamless. In other words, my file is not going to give in to the contours of the wood. It's gonna define the contour of the wood. So I'm using hard surfaces, in other words, files and rasps to make this shape and to, to make that joint almost invisible. That's our goal in a restoration like this is to try and make a repair, matched grain, matched wood, color, and surface and uh, so there it is. If I try sanding this stuff, it's gonna just scream uh, seam. You know, there's gonna be a, a repair right there. So let's move on. If you focus on your objective, and that is, in this case, we're, we're focused on the inside, right? I'm not out here on the horn yet. I'm not worried about the bore top surface. I'm only worried about this seam and where our glue line was. And I'm trying to make that disappear. So I do one thing at a time. That's the focus. And if we look real close, let's see if we can get some focus on this. Um, you can see that I'm using files and rasps. We're doing a hard shape, um, you know, hard back file, of course, to try and make that go away. And if I don't have any sparkle from epoxy and I don't see anything with my joint in there, then I think we're doing a really good job. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm using the light um, you know, my, my additional light here to try and reflect and, and follow those contours. I don't like to see any flats at all. I think the best looking Stanley totes are the ones that are beautiful, elegant with all of their curves and graceful lines. And if I see any flats, I'll make them disappear, right? This is not a pexto. We're not doing anything, um, that's, uh, primitive here. So we're trying to make this beautiful. So I focus just on that joint one thing at a time. Once I'm happy with that, and I think I'm at that point, um, you know, where it's all but disappeared, we can move on to the next thing. So it's either gonna be this top surface to make this blend in, or it's the geometry here on the, on the horn, right at the very tip. So using uh, a good example or a complete tote, it's easy to roll this up and you can see as I do that, that we're a little long and that's okay. You know, we're gonna always remove material. We're not trying to add anything. So, and I typically overshoot my, my length and my geometry because we can always remove more, right? So as you can see, we got plenty of material to work with. We'll do this top surface and then we'll shape this, uh, the horn itself. And then we'll come back underneath and clean all this up and make that all super smooth and beautiful. But so far, so good. I like our repair and I'm doing one thing at a time. So when I say that, I think about dinner time, right? I'm the guy that eats all my potatoes and then I eat my steak and then I go to green beans and whatever else. I don't eat all my stuff all mixed up and I guess I'm doing my work the same way. So focus on the joint, one thing at a time, 
then we'll go to the top, then we'll go to the horn. Moving on. So we're shaping this top in, and one of the things I try and do is mimic the original totes, of course. So as we set one on here, and we look at the horn length, you can see that I'm a little long, and I went ahead and penciled in kind of a target. Um, sneaking up on it, I'll take some more off. We're gonna shorten the horn up on this, and we'll shape it a little bit. Take a look at it aesthetically, see if it looks right. Um, you know, you, you can tell, if you've been around enough of these, you can tell uh, when the horn's been replaced and it's too long. Some people love a, a long horn on there. I've seen those. Um, and uh, again, we're kind of shooting for original here, so I'm gonna try and hit as close to ge you know geometrically the same as possible. But the other thing that I wanna note is that you notice there's a, a taper, right? So as we get closer to the horn, this does taper off a little bit. So we're gonna to wanna to take some off the sides here and kind of bring that in. And again, that's just graceful lines and trying to end, you know, in, uh, end this geometry um, with a little more, little more uh, fluidity or a little more style there. So uh, we'll keep filing on this one and, and we'll get a little bit closer. Now that I'm looking down, I'm looking straight down on this tote. I like to have, you know, the original geometry as we were shaping it is going to be this shape because we started with, you know, parallel sides and it was flat. And then we put a radius on it. And of course, the front radius is still there. But I like to give it, and I'm exaggerating in my little illustration here just for the sake of this picture. I like to give it a, a little bit of a tail, right? So think more like airplane wing where you've got a heavier big radius in the front, which is the original radius. And then I want to taper off a little bit on the back. So how I do that is uh, I'm using a flat file, right? So we're going to go at it just this way. And, and again, taking our time and I'm looking straight down on it. And all I'm doing is, you know, trying to balance the two arcs and make sure that I've got it symmetrically the same. And we're taking our time and I'm not worried about what's going on underneath. We're going to radius that off and we'll clean it all up. Obviously, we're going to create some flats right here and it's not going to look pretty if I flip this over, but I'm looking in this direction only, right straight down. Again, don't worry about the bore. We're gonna clean that up at a little bit later date. But again, taking our time and putting a nice graceful arc on it. And I think maybe our horn might be still just a little bit too long as we go through this process and we can always bring more material off. And I'm using a single cut file. Um, which I clean out often to give me a really good cut. If you've got a file card or a brush, you can clean that up. If you don't know the difference between a single cut file and a double cut, the single cut, of course, has got just uh, the, the cutting edges in one direction. A double cut would look more like an X all the way through. So I prefer, for wood products and for, for this type of application, something that's got a nice cut. Okay, so I need to jump ahead with this one. We are falling behind. I love playing with the camera and shooting the videos, and uh, but it does take additional time and it slows me down. So we're gonna move ahead with this one. It was really just a simple horn repair. Um, I like the way it came out and we left some pock marks and initials in it. Uh, if you remember this, I'm calling this one the down low uh, and that's going with the owner uh, who asked to just leave the initials in. And so we're going to do that. And as I finished, I also found some carving over here that I didn't even know existed, but there's some additional uh, down low marks in here. So, but let's go back up to where our focus point was. Um, as you can see, we don't have any evidence of uh, a marriage going on here. So this looks like the original rosewood to me, which is really always my goal. And then how did I open that top up? I didn't show you that, but I just used a simple Dremel and uh, with a bit and that bore was already there. If you remember, I didn't modify the bore. So it was already set and that was easy to follow it with the Dremel tool. But let's take this out in the natural light so we don't get all the shiny um, glare in here and see what it looks like outside. And that's how we'll wrap this one up. So thanks for watching. Again, we jumped ahead. Um, more to come. Uh, next up is uh, Stanley number one. So follow me, give me a like and subscribe. And guys, I'm always willing to share. So shoot me a note. And if you have any questions and let's keep on moving.